Herd immunity could be our best chance of getting back to enjoying ourselves together. If enough people have the antibodies for COVID-19, the entire population can be protected. But is that an impossible dream? Can global herd immunity ever be achieved? Without it, will the pandemic ever be truly over? As vaccinations ramp up, these are the questions being asked around the world. I'm Rob Watts in Berlin. Welcome to DW's COVID-19 special. Now, we've been hearing the term herd immunity throughout the pandemic. In the early days when some were suggesting we should let infections run riot to achieve it as fast as possible. And nowadays, with vaccinations making it possible to boost the population's protection in a controlled and rather safer way. But how does herd immunity actually work? Well, let's have a look. What is herd immunity? If many in a herd are immune to a disease, the pathogen cannot spread further. That's when herd immunity is achieved. Why is herd immunity important? We can use it to protect the weak, babies, for example. They're too young to be vaccinated against some diseases. For people with chronic diseases as well, because they can't tolerate vaccinations. Those with a weak immune system, such as after chemotherapy, also benefit because herd immunity reduces the risk of getting infected. How many have to be immune? That varies depending on the disease. The important factor is the reproduction rate of a pathogen. It indicates the number of people on average that one infected person will pass on a virus to. The higher the number, the more infectious it is. For measles, the basic reproduction rate is 15. For COVID-19, it's about 3. How is herd immunity calculated? Very simply, with this formula, where H is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by R0. For the coronavirus, that means that the herd immunity H is 1 minus 1 divided by 3, which is 2 thirds. That means 2 thirds of the population must be immune to have herd immunity. In Germany, that would be over 50 million people. What conditions must be met? The prerequisite for herd immunity is that the antibodies we produce in an infection need to protect us in the long term. With COVID-19, it's not yet clear how long someone who has survived the disease will be immune. What is certain is that people who have been infected are protected for at least several weeks. Well, let's speak to Edwin Michael. He's an epidemiologist at the University of South Florida's College of Public Health. Thanks for joining us on the COVID-19 special. You've been modeling timelines for herd immunity. So I, I suppose the place to start is, is it possible to achieve it? And if so, when? And if you look at the models, which are, uh, um, you know, predictions of, you know, the fraction of people that we need to immunize to get herd immunity, that is a function of, you know, the transmission rate. It is a function of the efficacy of the vaccines. You know, so those two will vary between places. And if you look at how people are mixing, if you look at, you know, the, the, the normal models that we use, which is the worst case scenario, if you assume people are mixing randomly, then you can work out what fraction of people uh, might need to be immunized to get herd immunity. And that works out for, um, for COVID between 80 to 95 uh, percent, uh, or 80 to, 80 to 90 percent of the people need to be vaccinated to get herd immunity. Now, to answer your question, we are now about 50 percent, 50, just above 50 percent of people are immune here in the U.S. You know, um, it's a combination of acquired immunity as well as vaccine-induced immunity. So that means we have to go, you know, another 30 percent of the people need to get immunized in order to achieve herd immunity. Can we achieve herd immunity? Well, that's going to depend on people taking up the vaccines and that take up is slowing. And also whether there's a substantive people who are going to resist taking the vaccine. No, yeah, we, we're just talking about the United States here, though, aren't Sorry. we? We're just talking about yeah. the United States. 
Can yep. we, yep. I, I, you know, herd immunity seems like a, a tangible concept there, although there, there, there are a lot of people who still need to be persuaded to get the vaccine to get there. But what about for the yep. entire world? Can, I mean, is it realistic to say that yeah. we can get there for the entire world? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, um, you know, if you look at vaccination rates, you know, and, and that's a huge difference, right, uh, um, between countries. Uh, the top countries would be Israel, uh, uh, as we know, uh, United Arab Emirates, you know, and among the major countries is the UK and the United States, you know, and they are reaching 50 percent above already. And if you look at Europe, uh, the European countries in general, the other European, the EU countries is between 20 to 30 percent, you know, and so they are a long way to go. So, you know, so the countries that have started vaccinating uh, very early have reached very high levels of uh, immunity already. The rest of the country, Africa, is going to be a concern. Not much is known. And we have seen what is happening in India, with just below 10 percent of the um, population uh, being immunized. You know, and the danger with that is if you release social measures, you're going to get the kinds of spikes or the waves that we are seeing in India, which is devastating, you know, mm -hmm. that country. So you're right, there's a long, long way to go um, before globally we're going to achieve uh, herd immunity. Yeah. And so I think when, when we talk now about herd the immunity, time has come. Yeah. Mm. we're talking about herd immunity to specific strains of coronavirus, or are we talking about, you know, to, to, to every possible incarnation of this novel coronavirus? That, that's a really good question, you know, uh, and that is going to depend on the kinds of immune responses which have been induced by the vaccines, right? And if you look at a vaccine, yes, the mRNA vaccine, they are, you know, the immune response, um, you know, is induced to the spike protein, yes? But, you know, that is a, a whole range of immune response to the uh, spike protein. It's not just one particular uh, response to this spike protein. So if you get another strain, Unless that strain, uh, you know, the mutation in the strain is completely novel and completely, you know, elsewhere from the spike protein, you know, that is going to reduce the efficacy of the vaccines. You know, it is mm -hmm. the efficacy rates which is going to govern the fraction of people that we need to immunize. Now, mm -hmm. evolutionarily, um, you know, getting to that kind of an, a brand new strain, you know, it, it's a long shot, you know, for the virus as well. So we could you know, actually, so right now, ultimately, vaccines, yeah. we could be looking at needing multiple herd immunities, right? It's not actually that yeah. we're aiming to end this pandemic with herd immunity, it's that we need herd immunities to the various different variants. Yeah, I mean, yes, um, because the efficacies will vary, you know, uh, um, between strains, you know, the vaccine efficacies, and that's going to dictate you know, the amount of people that you're going to uh, need to vaccinate. But in general, you know, with, uh, even if a 10 percent, um, you know, difference in the efficacy rates, you know, of the vaccines against the different uh, strains, we're still looking at that, you know, that window of, you know, 80 to 90 percent. Right. Of okay. people need to be vaccinated. Uh, Edwin Michael so, from the University know, and of... And that needs to be, as you rightly put it, you know, globally. Uh, if you want to see the end of this pandemic as a global phenomenon. Well, we'll get there one day, hopefully. Edwin Michael from the University of South Florida's College of Public Health, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you may be one of the lucky ones who's already been vaccinated against COVID-19. If so, you may have also asked yourself today's question for our science correspondent, Derek Williams. How long will the vaccines offer protection? We don't know yet. Uh, and even when we do know more, there won't be a single answer to this question, since about a dozen different vaccines are currently in use around the world. And since they're made by different manufacturers and are based on a range of different platforms, uh, they almost certainly won't all protect people for the same periods of time on average. Uh, what we can say is that the makers of some of the first vaccines to enter use widely last December are now reporting back that levels of antibodies have generally remained 
quite high in recipients, which is an indicator that those people are still well protected uh, six months after getting their shots. Those results have researchers hopeful that immune response, at least uh, that induced by those vaccines, uh, will last at least a year uh, and, and possibly a lot longer. But developers aren't leaving it to chance. Uh, most have already started modifying and testing the next generation of vaccines, some of which specifically target um, variants of concern. Um, trials involving a third booster shot with them are ongoing. And, and, and don't forget, though there's no sign yet that vaccine-induced protection is, is beginning to wane, even if it does, that won't happen overnight. And even if immunity does start to drop faster than predicted, healthcare authorities would notice it early. And, and a lot of the experts I've read seem to be pretty confident that we'll be able to respond quickly. Derek Williams there. If you've got a question for Derek, you can submit one through our YouTube channel. We're putting as many to them and many of them to him as we possibly can. And before we go, things are starting to look a little bit more like normal in the Spanish capital, Madrid, where the first bullfight has been held since the pandemic began. Seating was restricted and spectators wore face masks as they watched matadors take on seven bulls in a charity event to raise money for out-of-work bullfighters. Uh, temperatures were taken at the door and another tradition was also back. Animal rights protesters outside raising their objections while remaining socially distant. And that's all from me in this COVID-19 special. If you do want more, check out our website. Until next time, goodbye.